it's Liu, and then I'm, I'm, a, I'm a PhD student from uh, uh, Tobias Schimmelberg's group. And um, so today I'm, I'm going to talk about optomechanical coupling in photonic crystal ca uh, cavities. And thanks to Amir and Mohammed, um, they already give you, uh, gave you an introduction about a photonic crystal and phononic crystal. So today I'm, gonna, I'm not going through this uh, band gap uh, simulations at all. And then I'm uh, also not, not going to show you how to uh, optimize the, um, the, 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 the structures for, 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 for such, a, such, a, such a goal. And then the only thing I want to show you is about how to calculate the opto and the interactions between the mechanical motion and the confined light in such a photonic crystal cavity. So the idea is to have a cavity to have such a device which can uh, f uh, at the same time have a band gap for photonics and phononics, uh, sorry, for no for for phononics and photonics, but at the same time, the same time they can still have very strong interac in interaction. And um, then how does this coupling comes from? So when you start with the optomechanics, well, everyone tells you, okay, you have a Fabry-Hill cavity, and one of the mirror is moving, and then this leads to whatever frequency shifts in the of the of the of the of the, of the, of the optical resonance, and then the most intuitive picture of for this is to, due to the momentum change that the light is traveling or bouncing within the cavity, which can give you uh, a radiation pressure, which is pro directly proportional to the intracavity photon number, and the, 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 the coupling depends on the, the, the cavity length. So in this sense, we can uh, intuitively, you can just define an effective cavity length in this kind of coupling system. And then by calculating how much cavity length that you ch it, it changes, and then you can directly infer the coupling between the optics and the mechanics. But this is not enough. And then think about this, things, this, think about this kind of system. You have optics and mechanics and you have no idea how they couple. And then what you know that you wanted to find out the mechanics motion, it's, it's trying to modify the, the optical property of the cavity. So what could, what could happen? So in one way, it could, just, it could simply uh, change the frequency of the cavity, which gives you a dispersive um, uh, a change of the, of, the, of, uh, of the cavity. And on the other hand, you can have dissipative uh, coupling where the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the cavity loss actually is modified due to the mechanical motion. And, and both of these have been done uh, uh, like, uh, um, uh, th uh, th uh, in, in theory and uh, experimentally. So, but today we are going to focus on the dispersive coupling uh, in the sense that the cavity motion, uh, the, the mechanical motion is it's changing, modifying the the cavity frequency, and um, then uh, if we if we if you now talk about the 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 cavity uh, frequency change, and then uh, as Amir already pointed out yesterday, that in this kind of cavity, um, since that you are doing everything like the pumping and probing with light, so what could happen is like you have the the modification of the cavity frequency due to the light, but this can easily come from a lot of different uh, uh, sources, such as uh, the, the displacement of the, uh, sorry, such as the displacement of the, of the cavity, or the refractive index due to a change due to the pumping power. So um, we, uh, another way to think about this is to interpret this as a, pertur a perturbation of the cavity field or the frequency. So if you go to the perturbation field theory, you can easily, uh, you can easily um, check what are the contributions that is giving you uh, the, the, the dispersive uh, uh, coupling. And um, today we're going to uh, uh, focus on mainly two parts. One is the moving boundary, and the other part is the photoelastic coupling. So for the moving boundary, it's kind of very uh, uh, simple. So just assume that you have a cavity where uh, the, the boundary of this cavity is slightly moving due to the optics. And then uh, you, can, you can directly couple, uh, calculate the, the light, uh, the, the, the optomechanical coupling due to the, uh, uh, the boundary contribution. And on the other hand, 
if your if your mechanics it's uh, if if you have a uh, uh, oscillating uh, mechanical mode, and then this would actually also change the the strain uh, of the of the uh, of the device, and then in this uh, uh, um, as a result, due to the photoelastic uh, properties of the of the of the material, you can also change the refractive index of the of the uh, of the cavity. So in this sense, you also change the fre cavity frequency which is the photoelastic contribution in, in our situation. So, but if you look back into the literature, um, in the early days, it's not really, really well, it wasn't so uh, well understood. So, as I, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, so um, the, the very intuitive way to think about radiation pressure coupling is to simplify uh, the cavity with the effective length, where you directly calculate the length change. So back to the early days uh, for photonic uh, crystals cavities, which they can have both uh, optics and mechanics confined in the certain small area. And then the only thing that they, con they considered is simply the moving boundary contribution. So without, the, with the, without consideration of the photoelastic coupling. And then, okay, then let's check how to calculate this kind of uh, uh, perturbation due to the uh, movie boundary. So you have, um, so what happens here, the, um, you have the, your, 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 your uh, device or your cavity that is, uh, you, you want to study, which is, uh, um, let's say, surrounded in, 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 in vacuum. And then, due to the, uh, because of the moving boundary, you have a, a volume shift or displacement shift at the interface here. Uh, with the with the permittivity change from uh, epsilon one to epsilon zero, so Jackson told us um, <coughs> for the field which is uh, uh, parallel in parallel at the interface, which is continuous, and also the uh, the displacement field is also um, also also continuous. But what does it mean? It means that the, the, the field that is normal to the interface is actually discontinuous. So then the calculation becomes a little bit tricky. So um, another way, uh, if you directly do the, do the integral of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, with the inter uh, perturbation, it, it, it's not solvable because, because of the di uh, discontinuous uh, 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 normal electric field. So a way, another way to uh, uh, approach this problem is simply uh, do uh, a coordinate uh, transfor uh, transformation where uh, you you assume that uh, the permittivity of the of the of the of the of the uh, this entire structure it's actually continuous, and it's uh, anisotropic, where you define this um, ex, uh, epsilon bar and epsilon bar prime, where the normal field sees the uh, uh, the normal field electric field which is proportional to uh, sorry uh, um, no, the normal electric field sees the epsilon bar here. Where um, the 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 the, um, the 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 electric field were in parallel to the electric uh, to the interface, it's actually directly see uh, the uh, epsilon bar, and the GS here is kind of smoothing function function that can help you to to make um, uh, make the the, the entire uh, integral uh, uh, in a in a continuous fashion. So if you put into the cal uh, uh, numbers, you can directly calculate um, the the optomechanical coupling due to the moving boundary, which you can clearly see that it has two different contributions. One is the electric field that is per, uh, uh, per, uh, parallel to the interface, and then the, 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 the uh, displacement field no, uh, normal to the interface. So in this sense, we can directly calculate uh, the, the, uh, the optomechanical coupling due to the moving boundary. And then, um, what about the photoelastic coupling? So, what happens here is, due to um, due to the um, um, uh, displacement, and then you basically have uh, basically have a modification of the uh, of the optical properties of the of the field, and also you have a, a, um, uh, energy change in the cavity. So what, what, what happens then here is basically due to the photoelastic uh, uh, coupling, um, the, the P here is the photoelastic tensor and the S here is the strain max matrix that is due to the uh, displacement. So what happens then is because for, uh, for all the crystalline materials, due to the uh, uh, 
uh, isotropic uh, properties for the for uh, for the uh, photoelastic tensor, and you can actually you can also have the uh, basically you can simplify the calculations to uh, um, to to uh, which is directly proportional to the uh, um, the uh, uh, fourth order of the reflect index uh, times the, the the product between the uh, uh, re uh, constructed photoelectric tensor and the strain matrix. And then um, what you can uh, do is simply plug into uh, the numbers into the entire system. And then uh, what you need to do now is the volume integral of the of the of all the uh, electric field uh, contributions uh, uh, times the uh, strain field. So in this way, we can basically achieve a full calculation of both uh, moving boundary contributions and a photoelastic uh, coupling. And um, so even, even though the idea of combining optics and mechanics in a fashion with, uh, photo, uh, with uh, uh, band gaps, but the, um, the ideas have been proposed for a very, very long, time, long time. And uh, during the last few years, people are still trying to you know, make an optimized optomechanical cr uh, a crystal based on this kind of idea. Um, the approaches are, are basically uh, done in different ways. For example, what you can do is you can modify your per periodic structures, which can have, uh, we can uh, for example, you can introduce this sort of uh, cor corrugated structure, which can give you both uh, uh, bang, uh, phononic and phantonic band gaps. And then you have actually uh, both of uh, uh, moving boundary contributions and uh, uh, photoelastic contributions with the same sign. And uh, another uh, interesting way you can do it is by simply put additional uh, uh, different regions, which is actually for the uh, uh, phononic band gaps here. Because in, 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 in most of the situations, it's very, very difficult to have a both a photonic and phononic band gap with a full band gap. And also you can try with different materials. For example, diamond is very, very popular now, nowadays. And then uh, uh, Longkai and Mashalukin is trying to push the effort towards the uh, diamond optomechanics by doing fancy uh, etchings of the diamonds here. And also people are also looking at other different wavelengths. For example, you can use uh, gallium nitride to, to achieve uh, the same kind of um, 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 uh, goal. So what we need to do today? Uh, first, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to calculate, um, um, for example, the, uh, the mechanical frequency of a such cavity and, the op and with the mechanical Q, and also um, the optical frequency and the uh, optical Q. And then in the end, I'll show you how to, how to uh, ca uh, calculate uh, the cap coupling between the uh, optical field and the mechanical field. So um, I, I put uh, three different files in the, in the folder. One uh, console file is actually a fake, with a fake geometry, which you can practice. And you can use that to achieve the simulations. And another two th files that I gave you, it's with the, with the, uh, with the right. Uh, original, um, let's say, uh, geometry, which you can directly import afterwards for, for real calculation. So these are the simulation steps because the settings for this kind of simulation is quite complicated. So I won't uh, start from scratch. So I just show you uh, the different steps within the uh, within uh, within the actual simulation, and. Like all the simulations you do, you have to g define your geometry, your mesh, and your material, and your boundary condition, and the, your, your study steps. And after that, you have to configure your, your, your solver for the, uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the actual simulation. And then uh, we would calculate the optical mode view first, and then uh, separately we will calculate the mechanical, view, uh, mechanical properties. And then in the end, we can directly calculate the optomechanical coupling. So let's get started. So everyone has their, oh, sorry.
So everyone has the file open? Yes? OK. So um, so the geometry, it's 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 looking like uh, so. If you go to um, so in this type of simulation, um, we can we can introduce the symmetric plane where we can uh, basically uh, decrease the simulation volume that you that is required. So in uh, in this simulation, we just simulate one quarter of the of the actual device. And uh, the long beam here that you see, uh, it's the um, it's the photon, uh, it's the actual silicon, and then this uh, big uh, box around it's in, it's for the air. So let's uh, go. Um, um, so okay. So usually you define your parameters first, so uh, which you can directly import from any files that you uh, that uh, that uh, in, you can directly import from the files in the in the folder, and then now I give you certain. Uh, numbers, then you can have a rough idea about what the, you know, what the parameters that we need afterwards, which includes the refractive index for silicon, and the uh, the, the the photoelastic tensor uh, uh, for 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 silicon, here, and then the LTW here is uh, the properties for uh, for the uh, for for the for the for the photonic crystal, and uh, if you go to the if you go to the geometry, as I mentioned, uh, it's, it's, it, it combined two parts. And then uh, you can zoom in. So it has two parts here. And then, uh, so the, the, the field is basically symmetric up and down and left and right. So. So um, the the optics the the mechanical simulation would be simply focused on uh, the nano beam part, this uh, long rod, uh, long long beam part, and the optical uh, of the optic simulation would combine the uh, um, the entire uh, structure. And for materials, we use two types of materials here. One is air, one is for silicon, which is uh, very simple. And first, let's check the 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 study, uh, the physics that we studied for the for the mechanics. So, if you click this solid mechanics, you could see that um, the the region that we wanted to study for the mechanical properties, which is uh, the nano beam, and then for the boundary conditions, there are two parts that you need to be careful. One is the fixed constraint uh, for for uh, for the uh, both ends of this uh, 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 nano beam. And then also the symmetry. And uh, for the optics, so you would see that the optics is simulating the entire um, uh, in a geometry because uh, it has to take uh, it, it has to take care of the air that um, that um, the light is prop propagating into. So for the boundary conditions, there are two things that need to be careful. One is the uh, perfect mag uh, magnetic conductor. So, um, so as because well, what we're doing here is uh, we, are, we are focusing on the TE mode of this uh, cavity. And then uh, we've got, so uh, what we introduce here is a symmetric plane for the, uh, uh, for the, for the, for the electric field for, for up and uh, uh, for uh, um, uh, the upper and uh, lower uh, symmetric plane, and um, different from what what is done before, um, we are using scattering boundary conditions for for the for the two bond, uh, to the for the two boundaries here, which is outside of the simulation box, and then um, for the mesh, you can you can yes. 
um, you can um, this you can if, um, in this in this type of simulation you can you can put the bunch of conditions as a perfect match layer or a scattered bunch of conditions, and then. Uh, for this kind of simulation with uh, such a huge uh, air box, it doesn't make any difference due to the fact that uh, at, the, uh, at the field that is far from the uh, nanot beam, um, or the field is actually like uh, proportional, uh, sorry, uh, uh, normal to the, to, the, to, the, to the plans. So in this sense, it doesn't uh, make a difference. But you can still put a perfect match layer just for, yeah, yes? Uh, for the beam, what, what are you talking yeah, about? In, in the solid mechanics, you've got a symmetry. Yeah. Of the you don't have one for the, the ah, so uh, for for the optics, for the optics, because by default you have the symmetry in in, in this plane by by default. by default. Yeah, by default. If you don't do any configuration, you get a PC for free. That's that is what uh, well, that is by default in console actually. And then, what you can check the 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 the. Specifically, in your case, is defined by what kind of conductor you are assuming? Is it electric conductor or non-electric conductor? Right? Um, it depends on what um, what 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 um, what symmetry um, plane that you are talking about. So there are two uh, symmetric plans in in this system. One is the like like. Um, um, one is uh, the upper and lower. One is the, uh, the front and back. So from from the upper for the upper and lower we use a perfect electric uh, conductor. Where for the upper uh, front and back we are we are using a perfect magnetic uh, conductor. And um, let's go to the study steps. So what you have here, you have two icon frequency studies for the for optics and mechanics. So what you do here, if you if you check the icon frequency simulation for step one, you could see that now we are searching for icon frequencies around F zero, which is actually our optical simulation, and it's inferred here, uh, where the solid mechanics simulation is actually disabled. So in this step, you simply just study the optical properties of the of the structure. And then it would um, uh, it would give you uh, um, uh, the uh, the optical resonance frequency and optical Q in the end, because now um, I know that this frequency is roughly what I expect, so I just you know um, uh, search uh, the desired number of the icon frequency. I put one here. For a blunt chi, I would assume that you need to put more there. And there's nothing special uh, for optics except for the fact that console is always making life more complicated. And uh, there's one thing that I want to mention is, um, wait a sec. So uh, you can click server one here, and then you will see that in the icon, icon uh, value server one here, the transform point, it's actually not, uh, if, you, if you do this uh, from scratch, the transform point, even if you, even if you ask console to ask for, uh, to solve for value around F0, but it would, by default, this value is zero. And which is in most of the situation that you can easily get a lot of problem because it's just start from zero, start to look for the uh, eigenvalues, which is very, very far, for, uh, it's a very, very rough estimation. So it's, life is going to be much, much easier if you put F0 here. So now you can uh, right click and then you can get, um, uh, you can compute the optical properties of this uh, structure. And um, after that, after you get the optical properties, you can now, uh, now we can basically start the mechanical simulation. So here, um, similar to the optics, you have uh, 
um, there are different uh, orders of the mechanical mode and which are located around um, FM, which is uh, mentioned in the parameter list. And then now what you simulate is just uh, the solid mechanics uh, without the electromagnetic wave simulation in the frequency domain. And then another thing that you need to be careful is now um, in the values of variations that is not sought so for, in the study steps, um, in the study step here, um, wait. Yeah, you would, uh, you have to type eigenfrequency, which is actually from the study one, which is the optical properties. And then uh, in the solution, if you now already have the solution, you can just put the solution that is desired here. So in these steps, basically what you are doing here is basically you are, um, uh, after you finish with the optical simulation, you, got, you get the optical mode that you are interested in, and then you basically, you bake what you, what you do here is simply put the frequency that you need or the, the result that you need for the optical properties. And then in the, uh, in, as a result, uh, for the mechanical simulation, you would also consider the optics field, uh, optical field here. And then this is the way that you basically couple optics and mechanics uh, uh, in, uh, in, 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 uh, together. Even though nowadays Kamso is, is, is trying uh, a lot of effort uh, doing multi-physics uh, simulation, combine, combining all kinds of uh, uh, physics properties such as uh, fluid dynamics, uh, 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 mechanics, and, uh, but uh, this, because for us, we are, we are interested, into the, uh, interested in the perturbation of the optical field. So in this sense, you don't need to really have to do um, uh, a couple uh, e uh, equations, uh, or you don't you don't have to solve the differential equations for the coupled equation. Yeah. So, so this means that here we are not capable of solving for the dynamics. Of the, of the no, no. The the you you are simulating the, a mechanical uh, like a dynamics of the cavity, but the with uh, with the optical value that is considered by doing this kind of uh, setting here. There is no, 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 there is no feedback. No, there is no. What? Sorry. So, uh, uh, you have two solution steps here. Yeah. Optics yeah, and, yeah mechanics. and mechanics. So, how does the optical step depend on uh, your mechanical step? The optics doesn't depend on the mechanics at all but because it's. Because that is step one, and this this simulation are completely separate. But what, what, why do you need to configure with dependent variables? Uh, this is um, this is due to the fact that um, um, because in the end, what you need to do is you need a lot of you need a lot of surface integral and volume integral to calculate the optomechanical coupling. Where in this sense that if you if you put the optics through here, you can directly, basically within one solution, you have both optics and mechanics. And then you can directly uh, do the integral. Ah, so it's just a way to merge the solution. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And here the same. If uh, if you look at if you, if you go to Icon Server two, um, oh sorry, the Okay, never mind. Yeah, um, with this basically finish the settings for the for the calculations. After the mechanics uh, calcula simulation, you can basically get all the results that you need. So um, you can now basically derive um, all the integral that you need for the coupling of the uh, of the uh, of the optics and mechanics and the optomechanical coupling. So um, um, but you have to be very careful that uh, in the sense that uh, all the volume integral and the volume integral it might be very very easy because you just select the volume but for the surface integral it ha you have to be careful because you, you need to know what you are uh, in, uh, in, uh, integrating with so in this sense um, if you go back to the 
um, component. And then under the definitions, you would see a list of the of the of the uh, operations that we did. To um, the idea, uh, you can you can you can go through this afterwards. But the idea of this operation is to to basically um, select the boundaries that you want to use for lat lateral uh, integral. And um, because because the uh, the geometry for photonic crystal is very very complicated. Um, as a result, what we do, uh, um, it's, it's basically use MATLAB, MATLAB lifelink to simulate this kind of uh, structures without going through the, the, the steps here. So in this sense, you, uh, it would be much, much easier. You can like, all, like um, uh, uh, smartly select the boundaries that you need for, 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 uh, for calculations. So for example, for example, now if I ask you how to calculate the moving boundary contribution, and then you have to know which boundary you, are, you, are, you want to calculate, right? You want to integral with. And, and then, because the, the, if, you look at, if, you, if you look at this structure, if you look at the elements for the boundary, there might be like hundreds of boundaries. There's no way that you can type whatever boundary that you need. So, or select the boundaries that you need, especially for this, uh, this uh, uh, discrete uh, 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 holes here. So in this sense, you can basically do these uh, uh, operations to select the actual boundaries that you need or the actual volume that you need, which is all for um, the integral here. Uh, if you look at the surface integral uh, integration, uh, integration for, you could see that um, um, this is basically uh, directly the you know the in the selection part it directly takes the selection that we defined in the uh, previously so in this uh, in a, as a result that you don't need to go through the detailed uh, boundaries and then the, this is uh, for, um, for 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 the calculations of the moving boundary contribution and uh, integral five oh, sorry I think it's two. And then, which is the volume inter integral, uh, and then it's it's calculating the coupling density of the photoelastic uh, contribution. So, as I er, uh, mentioned in the early in the in the in the in the talk, so this geometry is a fake geometry with a slight modification of the hole size and displacement. So uh, now, in the result that you see here, for example, if you if you check the mode shape of the mechanical field. Um, it will give you for, uh, some very weird, uh, very weird uh, uh, displacement. This is not a simulation artifact just due to uh, the modification of the original geometry. So the actual uh, geometry is it's actually uploaded already in the file. That uh, what you can do afterwards it's uh, simply go to um, geometry. And then uh, import, and then you, you choose the, the actual geometry that you want to simulate. How did you create the geometry? Uh, this is done with MATLAB. I mean, uh, it, which is much easier because for, for, for the actual whole size, there's no way that you can do it with uh, like, like in console. Any other questions? Yeah? I'm wondering generally about the geometry of the flying crystal. In theory, you have very eccentric uh, holes in the area of the crystal, right? Yes. Is there alternative designs that give similar properties? Like, could you have the, the holes uh, eccentric in the other direction, for example, and get similarly almost right? You have the holes, what, sorry? <coughs> Uh -huh. I, I think I think as I as I mentioned I um, 
and uh, uh, so this to, um, um, the the optimization for optomechanical Chris, uh, cavity uh, it's it's not so trivial because you need to have a full bank gap for optics full bank for mechanics while at the same time you need to introduce uh, as you say, uh, 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 perfect tapering or, or, or geometry change, where you introduce a defect in the sense that you can still have a very good optomechanical coupling rate, which is not so trivial. So uh, it turned out in this kind of uh, the, um, the optimal design for, I mean, at least now it has been more than five years uh, already. And then still the optimal design, it's, it's still the original design from Oscar Pinter for silicon at least. And the photoelastic uh, contribution and the moving boundary contrib contribution are actually of different sign. It's not due to the fact that you, you have to be of the same sign, but it's just that due to the, uh, after the long run of optima optimization steps, and then it turned out that, okay, oh, if you want to have a perfect design, and then they are of the different sign, so. This is something that you need, you need to calculate. <laughs> Yeah, this is, would be the exercise for, for, for today. So basically for the derived values here, you, you, can, you basically have, um, for the volume max here, you can basically get the max displacement. This is used to uh, define the, 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 the effective mass. And uh, for integral here, this is, yeah, this is the just, uh, you can use, the second, uh, the the first volume integral uh, integral to to uh, calculate um, the 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 mode volume, for example, volume, and uh, yeah, and then uh, for the rest you have the calculations for photoelastic uh, coupling, for moving bunching contribution, and the volume def uh, deformation, and the quality factor for optics and the quality factor for mechanics. So any other questions? So now if you're confident, you can just um, import your, let's say, import your geometry, the right geometry. And then you can start the rest of the calculations, simulations. Really? It says what, sir? What? I don't know. This is not the geometry. This is the actual file. This. Um, sorry, I need to check. What is this? Yeah, that's not geometry.
think it's more to stomp. Yeah, uh, so this is the right geometry for now. And uh, let's check what you do for the mechanics, optics. Yeah, it's more or less the same. OK, so what you can do now um, in the study steps, you can put your desired uh, optical mode, let's say, let's put it four. Because we know that for photonic crystals, there are uh, multiple, actually multiple optical resonances for this kind of structure. So basically, uh, we, can, we can calculate uh, the different optomechanical coupling with the different optical me mechanical modes. So let's see how far it takes. Very slow. Yeah, the simulation is taking a little bit long, but so what we can do is let just cancel this one and uh, decrease mesh for the moment. And let's calculate again. So now you go to the electric field, and then, then let's look at the, the optic modes that we can get from this.
I think for a moment, if you if your simulation, if you, the simulation is too slow, and then you can uh, simply decrease the mesh. Otherwise, pro it will probably take very very long time. Good question. So originally, originally um, the air box it's it's done with uh, because it's it's a little bit easier for for uh, for MATLAB when you, for example, when you want to you know create such a simulation domain, and then the two the two little thing here it's basically a perfect match layer for mechanics for 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 for, for mechanics. So it's a bunch of condition for for mechanics, let's say. Yeah, yeah. But for the optics, for the optics simulation, it just simulate the it just simulate the entire uh, uh, cubic here, without considering the uh, the two little beam on both sides. On both sides. I mean, in principle, you can you can definitely just put the uh, entire uh, boundary condition of perfect match layer in, into the simulation domain, but that would make the geometry configuration a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, frequency. Um, the um, in a simulation, the mechanical frequency it's around five point eight or five point nine. So you get something or? Uh, and then you have to simulate with the right geometry. I would uh, suggest that. Uh, be careful about the boundary conditions and all the settings. Uh, there might be a tiny change if you if you simply import the geometry.
two different kinds of uh, boundary conditions for the lateral faces of the airbox and uh, for base uh, pieces. You mean for? Uh, Yeah. And scattering conditions for the, the other pieces that are left up. The on the scary one. Let me check on that. The boundary can uh, for the scattering boundary conditions because um, so this is as I said this is one quarter of the actual simulation. Mm -hmm. So basically you have a copy uh, on on the right. And then have two copies on the bottom. So then here and here, oh sorry, the, on the, the the top part and the left part are directly connect to the to the to the to the outside or to the environment. So in what you do here, just simply put uh, scatter boundary conditions for the top and the right. While for uh, for this, it's actually uh, wait, actually no, no, actually you are right. So. It true, true, true. You should have scatter boundary conditions also for this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, sorry. That, that's, I think this is my mistake uh, in the simulation. So yeah, you, you have to actually have to put scatter boundary conditions also for this. So um, for for perf per perfect match uh, for PEC or for for the settings for um, uh, uh, in console for 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 electromagnetic wave simulations, so PEC it's it's something that you put uh, by def uh, you get by default, where basically you have a symmetric electric field uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, for. Uh, 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 um, uh, relative to the to, to the to the symmetric plane, but for us, we are simulating the field in a sense that um, uh, you also have to consider um, uh, the um, 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 the Okay, let me think about this for a problem. Because we are focusing on the T, uh, T mode. So in the sense that then, then the electric field would not be symmetric up and uh, 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 across the up and lower uh, symmetric plane, but the magnetic field would. So you see what I mean? So the light, the, 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 the um, the electric field would be something like this, but it's not symmetric uh, across uh, across this plane. But it's symmetric from uh, from uh, let's say from the from the left and right, not the upper and lower, because the electric field it's 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 like this. We are focusing on the TU mode. Uh, uh, this is the localized uh, optical field. So, but the electric field, it's 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 like this. If you if you, for example, if you plot the electric field uh, components, you would see easily. Let's say let's put E Z here, and then you would see nothing. You see, so this means that uh, it's not symmetric across this plane, but uh, but the magnetic field would. If I put M, oh, sorry, what is the magnetic field here?
Yeah, if I put this, you would see the field in contributions. Yeah.